Are you looking to buy a home in the Seattle area? On today's video, I'm going over 12 tips to buying real estate in Seattle, Washington. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm Bryce Greenleaf. I'm a local real estate agent here in the greater Seattle area. And I love helping you guys out when you're buying or selling real estate over here, or when you're moving over this way from out of state. I love answering all the questions that you have. I love making videos about what it's like living in Seattle, what it's like moving over this way, and just the Seattle real estate in general. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell so you get notified whenever I put out a new video. Like I said, if you guys have any questions or you're looking at buying or selling a home over here, feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen. You can call, text, or email me. I'd be more than happy to assist you with whatever you need to help you make that transition and that process a little bit easier for you. But like I said on today's video, I'm gonna go over 12 tips for buying a home here in Seattle, Washington. All right, so tip number one is to be prepared to make a strong offer. So in this market, you might know it is pretty competitive. It is a seller's market here, a lot of homes see five to 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 offers on a single home. So it's important that you recognize the state of the market and what leverage and positioning you have. You can't usually go into a home, make a lowball offer and expect anything to happen in a market like this, unless it's a home that's been sitting on the market for really long for some sort of reason. Otherwise, if it's a home that a lot of people desire, you're gonna have to put a strong offer in right up front in order to even give yourself a chance. Now, there's more to an offer other than just the purchase price. There are many different aspects of an offer, so it's important that you talk with your real estate agent to figure out how you can best make a strong offer on that home. All right, and tip number two is to consider the suburbs. Don't just look at the city of Seattle. Seattle has its pros and cons, definitely a lot of cons there are with Seattle, specifically the downtown area. So there are some great, great suburbs all the way around Seattle, whether that's in King County itself, which is where Seattle is, or if you go up north to Snohomish County, or you go down south to Pierce County, there are some great suburbs that you can look into uh, that you'll wanna consider when you're moving over this way. If you are coming from out of state and you're not familiar with those suburbs, feel free to check out some of my other videos that I've done on the local Seattle suburbs, what some of the best places are to live, and that should really help you give you a guide on what some spots are that you might wanna consider. All right, and tip number three is to consider commute times first. So if you already have your job set up in a certain location, whether you already live here in the greater Seattle area and you have a job, or you're moving here from out of state and you've got a job set up in a specific city, make sure you consider those commute times before you decide where you're gonna live. You don't wanna work in downtown Seattle and live all the way up in Arlington or live all the way down past Tacoma. The commute time is just not gonna be doable. You're gonna hate your life and hate driving as much as you are every single day. So you need to consider those commute times. So start with that job location of where you're working and then figure out on the surrounding suburbs where a, a realistic distance would be for you to make that commute. Maybe you're only commuting into the office two or three times a week, so you're willing to go out a little bit further. Maybe you're commuting every single day and you wanna keep that commute under 30 or 45 minutes. So definitely consider those commute times before you choose what area you're going to live in. All right, and tip number four is waiting to buy a home usually is not going to help you. I hear this all the time as a real estate agent myself helping out clients. Oftentimes people say, you know, we think the market's going to crash. We really want to wait. I've heard that for the last few years. People think a crash was coming, the prices were getting too high, and they needed to wait. Well, those people that told me that two years ago have now lost out on hundred to $200,000 in equity they could have had in their home if they would have just bought at that time. And that trend continues. Over time, real estate prices go up. Every once in a while, yes, we'll have some dips. We'll have, you know, we had the one main crash in 2008. I don't see any kind of crash like that happening anytime in the near future. So there's really no benefit to waiting in the long run because in the long run, the real estate prices, the equity in your home is going to go up and it's only gonna hurt you to Wait, especially in a market right now where we have interest rates that are so good. So it's a great time to take advantage of those interest rates and get into a home before prices continue to rise. Tip number five is to consider lender fees and interest rates. So interest rate is not the only thing you need to consider when you're shopping for a lender. One lender might give you an interest rate of 2.875 and the other lender is giving you an interest rate of 3.15. But oftentimes that lender with the 2.875 interest rate is charging you more in fees upfront in order to get that interest rate low. So you need to look at all the fees associated with that because you might be paying an extra $5,000 to save a quarter or a half of a percent on an interest rate with a different lender. It's not just about the interest rate, it's about also what it costs you upfront out of pocket. So make sure you look at all those rates and those fees and weigh them together when you're shopping for lenders. Tip number six is to save up at least 3% for your down payment. So 
you can get it, get a conventional home loan for 3% down if you're a first time buyer or if you haven't owned a home in the last three years. If you have owned a home in the last three years this or you're not a first time home buyer, you either have to go 3.5% down or 5% down. So save at least 3% down for your down payment and then you have closing costs on top of that as well, which can be another around 2% of your purchase price in closing costs. So make sure you save up some money so you have some flexibility when you're making offers on these homes and you can actually make strong offers. Tip number seven is to know your must-haves. When you're figuring out what you want in a home, you're gonna have a list of things that you want in a home, things you desire, things you hope to have make a list of must-haves that are complete deal breakers for you that if this house doesn't have this specific item we're not even going to consider it because there are like i said some other items that you're going to consider luxuries or you hope you're going to have but ne aren't necessarily deal breakers you can put those on a list as well but make sure to make a list of your must-haves and share those with your real estate agent so you don't waste time looking at homes that don't have those must-haves on them and you're using your time efficiently and finding the homes that would best fit your situation and tip number eight is to know the seasonality of the real estate market so in the springtime is usually when the real estate market is the hottest. It's the most competitive. There's the most homes going up for sale. There's the most buyers out looking and putting offers in on homes. So it can be a little bit more difficult to get an offer accepted on a home this time of year. As you head through the year, later into the year, you get through to the end of summer, you get into the fall and winter is when real estate starts to slow down a little bit more. There is less inventory, yes, but there are also less offers being put on homes. It's usually a little bit less competitive. So you have to weigh the pluses and minuses to that of if you wait later on in the year, there's less inventory. So you might not be able to find the right home that you're looking for, that perfect home for you. But if you wait later on in the year, you might have a little bit easier time of getting an offer accepted on a home. So know the seasonality of the markets and what best might fit for your situation and what you're looking to do. Tip number nine, if you're looking at condominiums, make sure you do your research. There's a lot that goes into buying a condo that doesn't apply to a single family home, specifically things like the HOA and the rules and regulations. So if you have a pet, you gotta make sure that condo allows pets. If you're buying a condo with the hopes of owning it for a year or two and then using it as an investment property and renting it out, you gotta make sure you can rent that property out, that that association doesn't have a rental cap or it allows short-term rentals versus long-term rentals. You gotta look at all those CCNRs and rules and regulations to see what that condo association allows. On top of that, you need to review the resale certificate and the reserve report. This is what shows the health and wellness of the financials of the condo complex. And it shows your risk for potential special assessments down the road. So if the complex is in really poor financial standing, when that roof or that siding needs to be replaced in a few years down the road, they are likely gonna charge all the owners for that. So they could slap you with a $10,000 bill, say, hey, we need to fix the roof. Every owner must give us $5,000 or $10,000 so we can go towards putting that new roof on. They are allowed to do that. So you wanna look at those financials first and see if that uh, association has enough reserves in the account to support the repairs that they're gonna need down the road. Tip number 10 is you gotta find a great real estate agent. So kind of like I mentioned in tip number one with putting in a great offer, you need to have somebody that can advise you through the process and help you submit a strong offer on a home because it's not just about purchase price. Like I said, there are many different caveats and aspects to an offer situation. So you've gotta make sure you sit down with a great real estate agent that you feel you can trust that can put in a strong offer for you and best advise you on what's best for your situation and make sure you're not confused about the process at all and everything is crystal clear to you and how the whole process works. Tip number 11 is if you're having a hard time competing on these multiple offer situations for these great homes, look for a home that needs some sweat equity put into it. This can be a great opportunity for you because a home that needs new carpets, new paint, maybe a little bit of a kitchen update or bathroom update, a lot of times those homes do not interest quite as many buyers and they are not nearly as competitive when it comes to bidding wars. So this can give you an opportunity to get into this home with a little bit less competition, you can put in that sweat equity yourself, replace the carpets, do the painting, do the updates that it needs. Maybe you spend 10 to 20 grand on those updates and that sweat equity, and then maybe you've gained 30 to 50 grand in the actual equity of the home. So not only have you provided yourself a home to get into with less competition, but now you've given yourself extra equity on top of that, putting yourself in a good financial point. So this can be something that can be really helpful to look for in a market that's super competitive. 
Tip number 12, the final tip here on my list is about inspection contingencies. So in an extremely hot market like this, you will see that a lot of buyers are waiving their inspection contingencies. So this means they are waiving the right to do an inspection on that home. Now, personally, I as a real estate agent, I never advise you to waive your inspection. There are certain homes that you may feel comfortable doing that on and that's completely your decision, but I advise you usually not to. Now, there's a couple different things you can do with an inspection. A typical full inspection allows you to go over there, get the home inspected, and then come back to the seller and renegotiate. You can ask them to do repairs, you can ask them for credits to pay for repairs, or you can ask them to reduce the purchase price and renegotiate everything. This is something the sellers don't like to see because they know there's the chance that the buyers are gonna come back to them with a list of repairs or requests or things like that, which they don't wanna deal with. So in a really competitive market, what a lot of my buyers are doing right now, and it still protects you uh, by getting an inspection is we do what's called a pass-fail inspection. So it gives you the opportunity to still go over and do that inspection. And if you find something that's large enough that makes you not wanna purchase the home, whether the foundation's sliding, there's a bunch of mold, something serious that makes you not wanna buy it, you're still protected and you can back out of that deal, keep your earnest money and not lose anything. However, you're waiving the right to renegotiate anything with the seller. So you, after the inspection, you can't come back to the seller and say, we want you to fix these things. We want this amount of money. We want to reduce the purchase price. You're waiving your right to do that. So you're still being protected and you can still back out of the deal if something's wrong, but it looks better to the seller because they know you're not going to come back and renegotiate with them. So this is a great way to use your inspection contingency in a really, really competitive market. All right, well, this wraps up my top 12 tips for buying a home in the Seattle area. Like I said, if you've got questions about buying real estate over here, selling your home over here, or you're just moving over this way and have some questions, feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen. I'm more than happy to assist you with whatever you need. You can call, text, or email me. And like I said, make sure you subscribe to the channel here. And if you would, give this video a thumbs up, a like, so I can reach more people with the video and help out more of you that are looking to buy or sell real estate here in the greater Seattle area. Thanks for watching this video, everyone.